any handshaking with the legal entity known as Israel, legal entity known as Israel, even though the name Israel is the name of Yaqub alayhi salam, they don't deserve the name Israel. Any handshaking with them is forbidden. You can have ceasefires, ceasefires, but what you cannot have is uh, deals and uh, embassies and sharing trade and commerce with them to the degree that you legitimize them. So any leader who today recognizes Israel, Muslims should be wary of that leader, irrelevant to who he is. And the same with ulama scholars who recognize the state of Israel, uh, so-called Islamic scholars who give fatwa to validate the state of Israel and, the, and therefore validate the occupation of Masjid al-Aqsa and the removal of the Palestinian people, ethnic cleansing that's occurring in Palestine itself. Likewise, if these leaders, they adopted the correct positions, they would stay in power. How? I guarantee you, if Imran Khan had removed the French ambassador, today he would not be facing difficulty. Now his supporters will become emotional regarding me stating this. But I will give one story of a Sultan Nuruddin Zangi. Rahimahullah. A Sultan Nuruddin Zangi, when, he, when his father passed away, he only inherited one city, the city of Halab, Aleppo. And that city was filled with crime. There was crime everywhere. Nuruddin Zangi rahimullah, wanted to implement Sharia law. But his advisors said Sharia law is too relaxed with criminals. The Sharia law is not very strict. The way the media today makes it seem that Sharia law is very strict is false. The Sharia law is very difficult to apply on criminals. So they said we need more harsh laws, more harsher, harsher laws than Sharia itself. Nuruddin Zangi rahimullah, he wrote to his Sheikh Umar al malah who inclined to the position of his advisors. But Nuruddin Zangi did not listen to the advice and implemented Sharia law as it is, which was removal of all taxations, collection of zakat, distribution of zakat amongst the poor, and implementation of all the other Islamic laws and guidelines. When this was done, Umar al malah the Sheikh, he read in Hims, the city of Hims, on the pulpit, he said, on the mimbar, he said, the Umar, the ascetic, advised the ruler not to implement certain things, but the ruler gave guidance to the ascetic. They say within one year, law and order went throughout Damascus, throughout Aleppo, Halab, and throughout the region. Within a few years, the kingdom of Nuruddin Zangi, kingdom, increased from one city, but included all of Greater Syria, all of Greater Syria, all of Egypt, all of Arabia, which is the Hijaz and all of Yemen. And he became the most powerful ruler in that region. He was the, the fore, uh, father to whom? To uh, Sultan Salahuddin al Yubi rahimullah. That was the barakah of implementing Sharia law as it is. And similarly, the Sultan Salahuddin al Yubi rahimullah, who then conquered the city of Jerusalem. So if these rulers implemented Sharia, they will have the barakah, the blessings of implementing the Sharia. But if they do not, then they will always face this opposition. Their power will cease, it will go away and dissipate if they do not follow the guidelines and if they do not focus on the emancipation of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is the greatest issue that we face today.